and um, we've issued that guidance to all schools to make certain that they specifically understood what that is. And so know that if you have questions about what is and what isn't permissible in our schools, I strongly encourage you to reach out to Shane Oaks or one of the nurses, um, and they can clarify with you. Um, but we are going about this to ensure that we're meeting current guidance and safety um, regulations in regards to what's been coming down for recommendations from the Department of Health. And right now, they haven't ruled down anything that's not permissible other than that it should be two ply. And so that's what we're going with at this, at this point. That leads us right into athletics and activities. And um, athletic and activities guidelines came out. And what that said was, is that we would be opening for fall sports. Um, we're at step two right now throughout the state, which means we won't be competing to originally begin. We fully expect if numbers stay low, that, that the governor's office and agency of education will move us to step three, which means that we will be able to start competing um, after we get through the first two weeks of school. Um, and we have ordered PPE for our athletes. Um, if athletes don't want to wear the PPE that we've provided and they are able to wear their own, and I strongly encourage you to go through that handbook um, our athletic and activities directors across the SU and Shane and I have worked on it throughout the past couple of weeks and I feel good about it. Um, and so please make certain you review that and then contact your athletic or activities director if you have further questions. I got to remind you that that handbook is guidance for WRVSU affiliated athletic and activities. So a lot of our elementary schools have rec departments. They're more than welcome to access that guidance. But that guidance does not, uh, that guidance is not met for rec department. So I just need to clarify that. I'm certain I'll probably get some calls from folks around rec departments at the elementary levels. And I'll say you're more than welcome to use our guidance. But that guidance is meant for affiliated athletic and activities for WRBSU. Um, In-person learning schedules are out. We're five days a week at the elementary level and at our K-8s at our smaller schools. Um, there's been some questions around what specifically happens from 1.30 to 3. What I can tell you as an overview is I've asked schools to make certain that that is enrichment, that that is additional essentials, which is like performing arts, visual arts, physical education, outdoor education, experiential learning, as well as intervention. And those will all occur from 1.30 to 3. Core content academics will happen from essentially 8.30 until dismissal. And so that means math, literacy, um, you know, global studies, science, things of that nature, and intervention. Um, every, every school from 8.30 to 9 will implement a morning meeting to help with social emotional learning and socialization within their classroom. 1.30 to 3 is when teachers will have planning time for the next day because teachers will be in their classrooms with their students. From that time, the students arrive at 8.30 up until dismissal. And so um, lunch will occur in classrooms if there's questions about that. Elementary students will be eating breakfast and lunch in classrooms. The virtual learning schedule came out. It's gonna be a flip model. And I'll look for Lindy to continue to shake her head yes. And I get it wrong, Lindy, you just jump right in. But uh, it's a flip model, which means teachers will take their many lessons and it'll be posted for students and parents to access when's convenient to them, but it will need to be accessed daily. And um, teachers will then within instructional blocks be there to reinforce that mini lesson, as well as provide small group instruction, both in literacy and math. There is time for additional enrichment or essential time every afternoon. There's a time for a socialized lunch that will be covered by staff and staff will additionally have office hours or intervention at the end of the day. Special educators across the SU will be providing intervention for students who receive intervention via IEPs, and we're also working out what intervention will look like for students who do receive intervention, not service via an IEP. So that is all in the works for the Virtual Learning Academy. If your student is signed up for in-person instruction and you feel like after the first week this is just not working for you, we will permit you to join the Virtual Academy, 
but just know that right now it's important that we get that information in because we're planning accordingly and I am staffing the virtual learning academy with virtual learning teachers at the elementary level and so that means if all of a sudden we have a huge influx of students that that's going to create a staffing problem for me and so it's important that if folks are leaning toward the virtual academy that that information is provided ASAP so we can plan accordingly. Otherwise, it's going to be the detriment to students across the SU. So please get that information in. It's critical for planning purposes. If you signed up for the virtual academy, we're asking that you do that for the first trimester because we've based social distancing and in-person instruction on the number of students we expect to walk through the door the first day. If you're feeling like that's absolutely not working due to a change within your household or supervision, then you're going to need to contact me and I can provide um, an opportunity for your child to enter in person instruction, but it's going to require superintendent approval. Transportation is something that's come up. We've run a bunch of numbers. We've met with a transportation company. We are running our full routes. Uh, we know what our capacity is. It's, it is significantly down. It's 23 passengers, Shane. Is that correct? 23 or 25? Yeah, it's it, 23 to 25, depending on uh, age range of siblings students. And family, age. siblings is a big factor, yes. So we believe we have the capacity to provide transportation throughout the SU on our normal routes. Um, I'm thankful for those of you who agreed to transport your own children. Um, that's going to be very helpful um, to keep all of our students safe and to um, ensure that we're able to provide transportation through the upcoming school year. I will tell you that as your superintendent that I strongly recommend that you transport your own children if possible. Um, it's just the safest way to get your children to school. Um, there is going to be a health check required daily. That form went out today. I can't emphasize enough, and we will provide them in hard copies and send those home, but we want you to see them. That is required every day to board the bus. Without the health check, it's really difficult for us to ensure that students are safely getting on the bus. So please provide that. It's also going to help us more quickly get students through our health checks, okay? Because we will be taking temperatures every day before children enter the uh, school building and those questions have to be answered the idea is, is if that forms filled out when you arrive to school the forms handed it's reviewed we take the temperature student goes right into their classroom and reports in their classroom um, and so that we're not having to ask those questions as students arrive at the building we're hoping that that creates a much quicker and more efficient way for students to enter the building there are going to be multiple points of entry at most buildings or two lanes of entry to schools with folks doing health assessments, but having that paperwork filled out will be very helpful. There's also an in-person learn learning agreement. It's important that that's completed. I have to let folks know that the mask is required. That is to keep all students and staff safe. I am committed for us to be in in-person instruction as long as we possibly can. We know we have students that without having in-person instruction, they are gonna struggle mightily to learn virtually because parents or guardians may not be in the home and that is not fair to our students throughout the WRVSU. Therefore, I have to take safety very seriously. So if students are troubled with masks, I'm gonna encourage you right now to reach out to your principal so we can come up with a plan to best support them. But masks have to be worn. If students are struggling to wear masks and parents if you're concerned that your children might have classmates that struggle to keep masks on, I need you to know there's going to be zero tolerance for masks not being on. We'll put a support plan in place. We'll work with the student, but if that student can't keep that mask on, that student is going to be asked um, to possibly attend instruction virtually, or we will work out, out some other means to ensure that student and th their peers are safe but it's not gonna be permissible for students not to have masks on throughout the day inside, or if they can't safely socially distance outside. I've committed the SU to five days a week in-person instruction. I will tell you that I am in the minority across, this, this, this SU is in the minority across the state. I believe we can do it if we adhere to strict guidelines for, that have been provided for safety, 
across the SU, and if we implement those with fidelity, I feel confident that we can do this. But there is no gray. We have to make certain that we're adhering to those. Internet access survey went out as well today. It's important that you complete that. That's gonna give us information in the event that we were have to move virtual. Um, again, I'm committed to the fact that we're gonna be in person as much and as long as we possibly can. I hope it's all year, but I don't have a magical crystal ball and I don't know when we're gonna go virtual in the event that there's an outbreak or the curve changes. Therefore, it's important that we are planning behind the scenes to ensure that all families have access to reliable connectivity in the event that we have to move to remote learning again. So please make certain that you take those surveys seriously because it will be used to inform the work that we have to do to best support you and your family with connectivity. I have mentioned it a few times um, that this is the plan for the first nine weeks. I know that makes folks nervous, but what I know is that we have to continuously improve and I think that it would be very nearsighted for me to say we've got a strong plan and that's what we're going with. I think that this plan is going to have to be assessed throughout. And so I've been provided the flexibility by my boards to make adjustments if needed. I'm greatly appreciative of that. And the key to all this is that in order for this to be effective is that we have to adhere to the recommendations and guidance that's been provided to us. You have a very committed staff of faculty and um, administrators, and we are committed to provide really effective learning for your students. And so that we wanna thank you for all your support. You've all been terrific. And we are starting in service next Thursday to ensure that we have every I dotted and every T crossed so that when you come on September 8th, you can feel safe and secure that your students are in a really safe and effective learning environment. Jane, did you have any other additional things or Lindy that I missed? And I'm gonna look through the questions if you do. And if not, I know there's some questions already in the chat and I'm gonna start trying to answer those now. Amy, do we sell two ply masks at Joann's? I don't know what Joann's is. I think that's a comment that uh, two ply masks are sold oh, at Joann's, which is a Thank fabric you. store. I'm sorry, Heather. I totally misread that. Thank you, Heather. I appreciate that. And know that the PPE that we're providing students and staff does meet that requirement. Thank you, Heather, for letting us know that. So there's 43 people on the call. And so this can get uh, difficult to answer questions and ask questions if it isn't organized. Star six is the way you unmute if you're on the phone. And so if you're on the phone right now, I wanna ask a question. If you unmute now, I'll see that and then I will call on you by the last two digits of your number. Star six. I got that right, right, Lindy? Star six, not pound six, star six. You guys, I'm in enough board meetings. You think I know this by now. Anyone on the phone, star six, if you have a question. If not, folks that are on uh, virtually via the meets, if you unmute, I'll call on you. And you unmute by hit, hitting the microphone button. And while folks are figuring out whether they wanna ask a question, a few more things to add is if you're more comfortable submitting a question, there is a link within the um, superintendent's COVID-19 tab. I review those weekly, and I try to my best to answer all questions in writing and submit those to you on a weekly basis. So I have not gone through the questions. Uh, Ray, great, Ray just put the link in the, the, in the uh, chat if you're here um, via Meets, and you can access it there, submit a question, I collect those. Sometimes I take multiple questions because there's a, a similar question, merge them, and then submit um, answers to those questions. And like I said, if you have specific logistical questions about your buildings, um, schools are some. Many schools have already held virtual meetings. Many schools still plan to hold virtual meetings, even if they've already held one. They plan to hold another one, just so you know. 
Um, I know I have schools that are having teachers tape welcome back videos so you get a sense of what the classroom looks like. Um, and so no information is going to continue to flow out across the supervisory union on a regular basis. And I hope we're not overloading you, but I wanna ensure that you have all the information you possibly need to make an informed decision and that you have an understanding of what your child's day will look like. Bathroom breaks would be permitted. Um, we are never gonna say to a student they can't go to the bathroom. What I can tell you is, is that we are designating certain stalls to classrooms. And so this way we can better contact trace. Bathrooms will be clean regularly throughout the day. And so bathroom breaks are gonna absolutely happen. And if you're a part of Rudd Middle School, there was rumors about portalettes. That is not the case. Indoor bathrooms will be used. Other PE will look a little different across all schools, but PE will happen um, and all essentials will happen. Some of them are gonna be structured in four week or six week chunks and they won't happen weekly because we're trying our best to limit contact of our essentials teachers with different grade levels. Because what I don't wanna do, the whole idea of this is if there was an outbreak in a cluster, the idea is that that cluster may not come to school but that we would continue to have school open potentially. And so there's been questions asked about what happens if there was an outbreak. That outbreak will be reported to me. We will immediately work as a team of medical providers at the WRVSU with the Department of Health. And then we will immediately start contact tracing and the Department of Health will inform me about next steps. And some of that was discussed in information that was provided today. Uh, Stephanie, the forms will not be collected as they get on the bus. We just ask that the student has the form as they enter the bus. Great question. Uh, Matthew, we have not gotten to what heating will look like in the tent classrooms yet. Part of the idea of the outdoor classrooms is to ensure, just like I said, we had the hybrid model the first six weeks, that we know how to safely social distance, that we have a sense of what our numbers in school look like, and then we can make an informed decision about what instruction looks like as we start to return back indoors. I don't foresee us using outdoor learning spaces all year. I see us using that as the first nine weeks. And that's why I've tried to say that this plan is for the first nine weeks. We will continue to educate outdoors as much as possible, but I don't want folks thinking that we're gonna be outside the entire school year. We understand that that's not realistic and we want to make certain that we have effective instruction in place for our students. Great question, Lisa. So if your student is in in-person instruction and school closes or that classroom closes, you will do virtual learning with your teacher. That won't change. If you're in the virtual learning academy and we were to happen to close the school, the virtual learning academy doesn't go back to in-person teacher who's now remote. And you may say, why is that, Jamie? Well, if you're in the virtual learning academy, we're gonna to try to create a real classroom culture and socialize students across the SU so that it feels like a classroom and that we're building social relationships throughout that first trimester. After the first trimester, it may be that students go back to their assigned teachers. But for the first trimester, your child in virtual learning will stay with the teacher assigned in virtual learning and with their cohort because we don't want to interrupt that instruction and then reintroduce students to a whole new classroom, whole new teacher, and maybe just a different approach to instruction. Uh, we're working mightily to have common approaches to instruction across the SU, but I can tell you we are not at that level yet. You will receive, Arthur, great question. I tried to say that earlier. You will receive copies as part of your welcome pack back packet. We are not gonna expect you to have to um, print those off. And so you know, we're gonna assess how the paper goes throughout in survey. And if folks feel like a hybrid of a virtual and paper is something folks really want, we may pilot that in certain buildings as the year goes through, but we feel like this is how we should approach it for the first nine weeks. Uh, Sean, virtual learning will not look anything like it did last year. Uh, students 
will be expected to be checking in with content teachers daily. They're going to expect be expected to watch the mini lessons daily, and they're going to be expected to have reinforcement throughout the day, whether that happens during office hours in the afternoon or in the morning based on parent or guardian schedules or whoever the supervisor is, they will be flexible. But Lindy, correct me if I'm wrong, the expectation is we are checking with every content teacher every day. Correct, and I think to answer maybe, I'm kind of assuming here, Sean, we are gonna use Google Classroom as a platform to be able to get information out to families in terms of assignments and things like that. So hopefully the technology piece in terms of if you finally mastered as a parent how to get your kid onto Google Classroom won't be something different. It'll just be more the work expectation and how much um, support or interaction you have with your child's teacher or your student has with their teacher that'll be different than the spring. Um, is there a way to complete that? Not yet, Robin. There's not a way to do that. We may move to that eventually. The issue was connectivity around providing a virtual health form right now was a major concern when parents pulled up in a car. And if we didn't have access to that outside, we were worried we were going to frustrate parents because you've already filled it out. And then we're asking the exact same questions again. So we feel like we have the technology worked out to do a virtual health form. We absolutely will. We just didn't feel confident that we had that at this time in all of our campuses. Jamie, Heather asked a question about uh, symptoms and I don't know if you wanted to answer that or if you wanted me to. Yeah, you go for it, Shane. So Heather asked if, uh, if there are multiple children in a home and one child has a symptom uh, when they do the health screening at the morning that requires them to stay home and not come to school, does the other sibling have to stay home as well? No, that is not. Uh, the other child, if they are free of any symptoms and their temperature is under 100.4, they are free to go uh, to school. We expect there to be a lot of people um, that call into school sick because of the health screening that's gonna be done every day um, at home before children leave for school. Um, and I think it's important that we adhere to that practice, that we stay home if we have any symptoms or if we have a fever um, or feeling ill. Uh, and we also shouldn't jump to conclusions that because somebody has uh, one of the symptoms on this list that they are uh, COVID positive, um, because that is not uh, that is not the case. This is not a diagnostic tool for COVID nineteen. It's just a, a symptoms list that requires folks to stay home. Um, you should contact your school nurse um, and uh, connect with them about what follow up steps should be. So. All right, 504 situation, our students service via IEP. Uh, Matthew, you, will, you can expect the same level of interventions that we would try to be providing students in in-person instruction. And that is something that Lindy is coordinating right now with our coordinator, uh, yeah, with our coordinator of student support, <laughs> with our, our student services coordinator at the WRBSU, our special ed director, John McKay. Uh, that will look like either small group or direct instruction from a special educator or interventionist, Heather, as per the IEP. Uh, Lisa, that is a question for the principals about how they plan to handle that. Um, I think that I that would be not wise of me to speak to how every building would do that. I don't know if it'll be paper copies or emails home. Um, so I think that I would encourage you to reach out to your building principal around how they will keep students um, updated, just like they would have in the past if a student was out sick. Uh, Robin, I mentioned busing before. Um, it's the same routes as before. Times are going to change a bit because drop-off times are different, and that information will be getting out ASAP. The bus company is working on route times. Um, the transportation is limited 
down to 23 to 25 students per bus, but we feel like based on the survey that you all filled out, that we will have the capacity to provide transportation. And health forms have to be completed before boarding the bus. We will also be taking a temperature of students once again after they leave the bus, just so folks know. So I'm asking parents to take a temperature at home, and we will also take a temperature as students um, leave the bus. No problem. Are there any other questions? And again, you can unmute. If you want to use the chat, use the chat. If you're on the phone, it is star six to unmute. These are great questions. Yeah, Robert Hudson here. I was wondering if there's going to be health checks during the day. Throughout the day? There's no intention to do health checks throughout the day. Any other questions? I got to tell you all, the questions have been great throughout and uh, the support that you're giving us and the uh, trust. And um, I just can't thank you enough. Um, that's really helpful. There will be lunch, Matthew, provided for students that are in virtual learning. And Lindy will have those details out to you. It's going to look a lot like it did in the spring as far as drop off and curbside pickup. Um, but we will be providing lunch um, throughout, the, uh, throughout the trimester for virtual learning students and throughout the year, if you choose to do it throughout the year. Yes, Stephanie, my sense is that Heidi absolutely will have an informational night for athletes. And I would expect the same from Loretta. Thanks, Rob, and I really appreciate it. We're trying our best to get as much information out to you as possible so you can make an informed decision. I totally understand that this is a difficult decision to make. Um, and uh, so, you know, also know that this, this target continues to move and uh, guidance continues to change. And so we try to change as quickly and swiftly as possible as it changes, and we will continue to be responsive to the changes as they come. There's no other questions. I think that's going to conclude tonight. Oh, we have one right there. No problem. Uh, Amos, they'll happen throughout the day as well as 1.30 to 3. We want to ensure that all interventions happen with fidelity. So interventions will occur throughout the day and they will also occur from 1.30 to 3 based on if students are there from 1.30 to 3. So that 1.30 to 3 time will include intervention as well, uh, but interventions will happen throughout the day. Uh, Lisa, I tried to hit on that earlier. So if there's a positive COVID test, that will be reported to the superintendent's office. I'll work with our local medical providers and experts who have been helping us throughout on the COVID uh, task force and recommendations, as well as the Department of Health. Um, and so we've been working closely with them. Shane would be pulled in. We would then inform families as much as we possibly can in accordance with FERPA and let you know, and we will absolutely be transparent. If I can share it, I will. You'll get to know that I'm as, as transparent as I possibly can be. And then we'll make an informed decision about what that means is whether or not a cluster is, is not coming back to school or whether it's a specific classroom, or whether or not it's at a point where we need to close a building. And that will all depend on contact tracing and what's been occurring in that building. But you absolutely will be notified. Uh, Amos, this is recorded and will be posted to the COVID-19 website. So if you missed anything, I strongly encourage you to watch it. 
um, and it will be posted. I do not have time to type up additional stuff tomorrow. Um, I apologize about that, but certainly you can watch the recording and that's why I recorded it and you'll have access to it. And if you have further questions that pop up and you feel like it wasn't answered, if you submit it to the superintendent link for questions, I answer those on a regular basis and I'm gonna do another answer session uh, no later than Tuesday of next week of questions that have come in over the last week and those will be sent out as well. I just wanna let you all know, I'm really excited to be serving as your superintendent of schools. Uh, when I agreed to come to the WRVSU from my uh, tenure at the Williamstown schools as the principal there, I didn't realize we'd be in a pandemic in these unprecedented times, but I have a great team around me. I'm happy to be here. And uh, I feel really confident that we're gonna do a great job for you and your family this upcoming school year. So thank you all for attending next Thursday night will be specific to the Virtual Learning Academy. And Lindy will be taking the lead on that, but I'll certainly be there as well to support Lindy. And that will be next Thursday at 5.30, and we will be specifically inviting folks that have uh, registered for the Virtual Learning Academy to attend next Thursday evening. Thank you all very much, and have a great weekend. It's gorgeous out there. Get on outside tonight.